While the Katona Lewisboro School District continues to be proud of its students' accomplishments and outcomes, the district constantly reviews its facilities to ensure that it is providing optimal learning conditions for all students. Many factors influence what makes a good learning space. These include educational best practices, safety and security needs, and the health and well-being of students and staff. To meet current teaching and learning standards, schools today should allow for active learning in flexible spaces. Gone are the days when rote memorization while seated in rows of desks was considered optimal. Even computer labs, a relatively recent addition, are no longer on the cutting edge of learning. Today's schools also must provide heightened security and, here in Katona Lewisboro, sustainability is always a priority. With these priorities in mind, a 17-member facilities committee made up of school leaders, community members and parents representing all five schools spent nine months during the 2021-22 school year undertaking a thorough review of all the district's facilities. Working from the district's five-year capital plan and the state-mandated building condition survey conducted in March 2021, the committee identified $49.5 million worth of work to be addressed in the five school buildings. The guiding principles that shaped the project list were importance to the student learning experience, health, safety, and security, sustainability, fiscal responsibility, and parity among schools. On October 18th, the community is invited to vote on the proposition to fund this investment. While full details can be found on the district website, here are some of the key elements. Every school will receive a new entrance vestibule to improve school safety. At each elementary school, old computer labs adjacent to libraries will be converted to next-generation flexible learning spaces. These new spaces will support innovation and collaboration. At Increase Miller and Meadow Pond Elementary Schools, the common wing areas will be updated and equipped for air conditioning with environmentally friendly electric heat pumps. At Katona Elementary, where oil burning boilers are due for replacement, it is proposed that a full geothermal heating and cooling system be installed for the entire school. The system will require no future fuel purchases, offering considerable savings, and have considerably less environmental impact over time. This is an exciting advancement for the district and may serve as a pilot for the future of other buildings. At Increase Miller Elementary School, it is proposed that two modular classrooms that are already well beyond their useful lifespan be replaced with three new permanent classrooms along with some small group instructional spaces. All three elementary schools will see enhancements to the learning environment as well as behind the scenes upgrades to important infrastructure. Total proposed investment for the elementary schools is $10.9 million at Increase Miller, of which almost half is the updated classroom space, $10.8 million at Katona Elementary School, of which $7.4 million is the geothermal system, and $5.8 million at Meadow Pond Elementary School. At John Jay High School, the proposal calls for renovation of the science classrooms in C Wing and the entire B Wing. In the science wing, the renovation will lead to more modern learning environments, replacing equipment that is more than 50 years old. The renovation will also bring air conditioning to these classrooms. The B Wing will be reimagined as a learning commons with flexible classroom spaces in a renovation that will include air conditioning and provide an opportunity for rooftop solar panels. This change will also facilitate the creation of an outdoor classroom. The high school auditorium will receive significant upgrades and the school's two step labs will be reconfigured to become more modern, flexible and usable spaces. In addition, at the front of the school a new hallway will improve the flow of foot traffic and increase accessibility to the school's gym and fitness center. In the middle school, the technology labs will be renovated into more modern, flexible, student-centered environments. The step lab within the library will be updated into a more flexible and usable student and adult learning and presentation environment. Renovations are also proposed to the middle school family and consumer science rooms, where learning has changed substantially over the years. 
and will include a greenhouse reflecting the renewed interest in sustainability and food security. Additionally, infrastructure will be updated throughout the school. Proposed investment in the secondary schools is $12.4 million at John Jay High School and $9.6 million at John Jay Middle School. In keeping with the district's commitment to sustainability, the Facilities Committee ensured that the proposal included no new investment in fossil fuel technology. Rather, the proposal calls for environmentally friendly technologies such as better insulation, more energy efficient windows, and electric heat pumps. State aid will cover almost 31% of the cost of this construction. Completing a major project such as this through capital improvement bonds, rather than through the annual school budget, allows the district to maximize state aid and spread the cost to taxpayers over time. When developing this proposition, the Facilities Committee and Board of Education took care to consider the financial impact on the community and timed payments to start in 2024 when existing debt is retiring. The tax impact will vary from year to year and differs in each town, from $9.85 a month in North Salem to $16.78 a month in Pound Ridge. Lewisboro taxpayers would pay just over $11.04 a month and Bedford taxpayers $14.11 a month. Should the community approve the proposition, the district will immediately proceed with the state approval process so that construction could begin as soon as the summer or fall of 2023. Work will be scheduled to minimize disruption to students during the school year. Complete details of the project can be found on the district's website. For questions about voting, please contact the district clerk, Kimberly Monson. Voting will be from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. on October 18th at each of the three district's elementary schools. For more information, please visit the district website and don't forget to vote on October 18th.